Thank you. I hereby call the Finance Committee meeting to order for Monday, May 1st, 2017, 7 p.m. Council, just a couple of house cleaning uh, uh, issues. First of all, if anybody is here relative to a pending water matter that was reported in the Brockton Enterprise yesterday, there is nothing before us this evening relative to that matter. Nothing has been submitted to the full city council or referred to this committee. So if you are here, I do apologize. I'm not sure why it stated that. But we are not talking about that matter tonight. We hopefully will be talking about that in the near future. Uh, also, councilors, uh, as I stated at the, last, the conclusion of the last meeting, uh, we will be meeting here uh, for the month of May. Um, we're going to continue to do that because of the fact that, first of all, the dean of the council, Councilor Yanieri, was able to coordinate that with Mike Thomas, Assistant Superintendent of the Schools of Brockton. Uh, I did get an email today from Mr. Kassiri that he believes the elevator is operational, but um, we're going to stay here through May. Uh, I'll be speaking to the mayor's office relative to timing and Mr. Conant for the budget, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to just move forward into city council and get it effective again through the chamber. Um, last thing, councilors, when we get to agenda item, when we conclude agenda item number 12, I'm going to entertain a motion. I'd like to take 15 out of order. Um, before 13 and 14, as the mayor requested today, he has a family matter he needs to go to tonight, and I think that it's uh, more than just and appropriate to accommodate that as such. Uh, with that being said, we're going to move into the agenda items, if we could, Madam Clerk. One, appointment of David Sylvester of 363 Ash Street, Brockton, as a trustee of the War Memorial Building for a three-year term. Invited, David Sylvester. Good evening, Mr. Sylvester. How are you tonight? Good, thank you. Thanks for joining us tonight. Very welcome. Do you, uh, do you have a statement or anything? No, I'm good. Okay. Counselor, is any question? Counselor? I was going to motion to recommend favorably if nobody has a question. Second. Motion made properly. Second, a favorable recommendation back to the full council. All in favor, please raise your hand. I'll oppose that motion carries. It's recommended back to the council. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank we'll you take very much. Thank have you. a good we'll night, vote, all of you. We'll vote on that next Monday night. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman? Counselor? Just a housekeeping matter. Counselor? Counselor Cruz is sick. And Councillor Monaghan has had an emergency at work, and I wanted to pass that. Thank on. you. And I neglected to say our colleague, Councillor Rodriguez, is actually out of the country this week, so we won't be joined by Moses. Uh, Madam Clerk, number two, please. Reappointment of Lori Monaghan of 174 Manomet Street, Brockton, as a trustee of the War Memorial Building for a three year term. Second. Motion made properly. Second, a favorable recommendation back to full council. All in favor, please raise your hand. I'll oppose that motion carries. Favor recommendation back to the full council. Thank you, councils. Madam Clerk, number three, please. Reappointment of Richard Bath of 38 Frost Street, Brockton, as a trustee of the War Memorial Building for a three year term. Invited, Richard Bath. Mr. Bath, good evening. Good evening. How are Let's you? I feel uh, deja vu being back here in the Rom Theater, huh? Yeah, God. Hasn't changed and I, much, has and it? And I just broke out onto a heavy sweat sitting <laughs> yeah, up there I in the tell. back, and thank God you guys are doing it, not me. So. Do you have a statement for us? Uh, no, I just uh, want to thank the mayor for uh, uh, reappointing me to the War Memorial. We have a lot of work to do over there, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for what you do. Back. Back. Motion right. on the table, properly second in favor of recommendation. Back to full council. All in favor? I'll oppose that motion Thank carries. Thank you, Mr. Bath. Favorable recommendation, Madam Clerk, back to the council. Number four, please. Reappointment of Miles Jackson of 25 Stearns Ave, Brockton, as a trustee of the War Memorial Building for a three year term. Invited, Miles Jackson. Second. On the motion, Council? No, no, no. I just wanted to move it favorably to the Okay. <laughs> motion made properly, second, a favorable recommendation back to the council. All in favor? I'll oppose that motion carries. Favor recommendation back to the council. Madam Clerk, number five, please. Reappointment of Henry Tataglia of 33 Brook Street, Brockton, as chairman to the License Commission for a three year term. Invited, Good. Henry Tataglia. Good evening, Mr. Tataglia. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for being here tonight. Okay. You have a statement for us at all or anything? No, everything's all right. Thank you. Thanks for what you're doing. <laughs> second. Favor recommendation. Uh, there's a motion on the floor. It's properly second. Favor recommendation back to council. All in favor? I'll oppose that motion carries. Thank you very much, Mr. Tataglia. Favorable recommendation back to the council. Number six, please. Reappointment of Ozzie L. Jordan, Jr. of 31 Hollis Street, Brockton, as chairman to the Water Commission for three year term. Invited, Ozzie L. J Jordan, Jr. Council Bonds. Yes, um, Ozzie actually contacted me on my way here. He is with his granddaughter at, a, at uh, the Brookfield baseball field. He, I, I guess it's the, the fancy of the council if we'd like to put it at the end. I don't know if he really has a, an official statement, but I did tell him that what could happen is we could just do it without him. 
he was okay with that, but I didn't know if the council wanted to hold it. No, we're going to do it, council. And, and again, I forgot to. Uh, uh, there's a Scrivener's error relative to Mr. Tataglia. We, as the as the finance committee, cannot designate a chairman. Only the only the uh, license commission could designate a chairman. We have the ability to um, f reappoint both Mr. Tataglia and Mr. Jordan to the commission. The commission ultimately decides the chairmanship. That should not be on there. Uh, the clerk had indicated that as such last week. So number five, Madam Clerk, just strike as chairman, please. Uh, number six, uh, I think we can move. We, we, we know of him. Again, we're going to strike the word uh, as chairman, and it will be read reappointment of Oziel Jordan, Jr. of 31 Hollis Street, Brockton, to the Water Commission for a three-year term. Motion on the floor, properly seconded. All in favor? All opposed? That motion carries. Thank you, Council Barnes, for telling us that. Number seven, please. A reappointment of Bernie Hassan of 26 Reese Circle, Brockton, to the Water Commission for three-year term. Invited, Bernie Hassan. Mr. Hassan, good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you tonight? It's uh, wonderful tonight. Thank you. You look good. You look like a Harvard professor. Well, I you know, this, you I don't know. I don't know how much longer <laughs> it's going to be here, Council. We'll, we'll, we'll give it a try. <laughs> Thank you very made, much. Thank you. <laughs> motion made properly. Second, favorable recommendation back to council. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, that motion carries. Favorable recommendation back to full council. Madam Clerk, number eight, please. Reappointment of William R. Thomas, Jr., 19 Albert Ave, Brockton, as a constable in the city of Brockton for a three year term. Invited, William R. Thomas, Jr. Mr. Thomas, good evening. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. Do you have a statement for the committee? No, just want to continue to do what I'm doing here. Thank you. Any Thank questions? You. Move for a favorable recommendation. Second. Motion made properly. Second a favorable recommendation. Back to full council. All in favor? All opposed? That motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's going to go on to number nine, please. Reappointment of Kenneth Legrease of 146 Court Street, Brockton, as a constable in the city of Brockton for a three year term. Invited, Kenneth Legrease. Legrease, good evening. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Can you take your hat off, please? Thank you, sir. Uh, do you have any statement for us? No. Any questions? Entertain a motion? For a favorable recommendation. There's a motion on the floor. It's, it's properly second a favorable recommendation back to full council. All in favor? I'll oppose that motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Favorable recommendation back to full council. Number 10, please. Reappointment <clears throat> of Robert William Bishop, 333 Foundry Street, Southeastern, as a constable in the city of Brockton for a three-year term. Invited, Robert William Bishop. Mr. Bishop, good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being here. Any, any statement for us? I'd just like to uh, request your reappointment to continue to be available for the city and the residents. Move for a favorable recommendation. On the motion, Councilor. Uh, now, <coughs> excuse me, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. President, but um, there was something at one time about residency. Was, is, did it not? Apply to the constable? It's not applicable to the constable position. No, okay. All right. I just wasn't sure. All right. Just check. Thank you, sir. How long have you been a constable in the city of Brockton? Uh, about 20 years. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, any other questions on that? It's a motion on the floor. Proper, there is a motion, right, Councilor? Yeah, there is. So it's properly yeah, second. Yeah. Favor of recommendation. Back to full council. All in favor? I'll oppose that motion. Carries. Favor of recommendation. Thank you. Thank have you. a good evening. Uh, Madam Clerk, we're going to go on to uh, number 11, which is the order, please. Order that the City Council accepts the grant of easement from the City of Brockton to Massachusetts Electric Company to construct, reconstruct, repair, maintain, operate, and patrol for the transmission of high and low voltage electric current and for transmission of intelligence and telephone use, one anchor and guy, and all necessary equipment and apparatuses over, across, under, and upon the area of the here and after described property owned by the city of Brockton, southerly side of Center Street to originate from existing pole number 21 upon a certain portion of parcels of the land described in a deed dated December 18th, 1998. Invited Timothy W. Carpenter, Superintendent Park and Recreation, Elizabeth A. Fresloan, <clears throat> National Grid, Bill Matthew, care of Carrie Lee, National Grid. Councilors, as you, as you recall, uh, Superintendent Coppola sent me a detailed email relative to this matter, uh, but Council Beauregard and myself thought it would be appropriate to continue it. Um, Mr. Coppola is here, and I believe someone from National Grid as well. So with that being said, thank you for being here, Mr. Superintendent. Thank uh, you. Could you just give us a, a summary? <clears throat> sure. Uh, so this is um, basically there's a poll just outside of, on Center Street, just outside the Union Cemetery. Um, this would be a guide wire and an anchor um, within an area of the Union Cemetery. Um, 
It's approximately a seven foot turfed area between a roadway and the fence. It's not really a usable, variable area. Um, the guide and the anchor would probably take up three to five feet of this space, if that. Um, so it's not an area where we'd be losing a uh, variable uh, area in the cemetery. Thank you very much, Mr. Kaplan. Sir, just for the record, your, your name? William Matthew. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. Uh, Councilors, any questions relative to this matter? Any questions for the gentleman from National Grid who came here? None? I entertain a motion then. Move to recommend favorable. Second. Motion's made on the floor, properly seconded a favorable recommendation back to full council. All in favor? I'll oppose that motion carries. Gentlemen, thank you for being thank here tonight. You. Favorable recommendation back to the full council, Madam Clerk. Number 12, please. Resolve that the Mayor, Director of Planning and Economic Development, Building Inspector, and the Executive Director of the Brockton Redevelopment Authority be invited to appear before a committee of this council to review the issues relative to the condition of the two properties, city-owned parcels at 47 West Elm Street, Assessor's Map 91, Route 4, Plot 102, and Map 91, Route 5, Plot 103, West Elm Street, and the process that led to the recommendation to the City Council that the Mayor be given authority to transfer such properties to the BRA. Invited, Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, James Kaziri, Superintendent of Public Property, Rob May, Director of Planning, Economic and Development, Robert Jenkins, Director of Community Development, BRA. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Mr. President, uh, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, before we go into this, uh, Council Farwell, I believe this is Mr. Monahan's, correct? It, it is. Uh, he, uh... His attendance on this matter has not been exemplary. <laughs> <laughs> I concur with that. <laughs> Nor was I notified that he wouldn't be attending tonight. <laughs> I actually did get a message from him as well. He said that we can go forward with his resolve while he's not here dealing with the emergency. Okay. Everybody it's okay at, with that? At the, at the Council's pleasure. Everybody's good with that? Okay. <laughs> You're right. Mr. Mayor, please. So if it's okay, Mr. President, I'll make some just kind of general overview remarks. Uh, all of the individuals that you invited are here and uh, prepared to answer any questions that the council may have. And I'm sure if, if Council Monaghan has a specific question that we don't address tonight, we'll make ourselves available to him to answer his questions. Uh, the property that's referred to here in the resolve is uh, 40, better known as 47 West Elm Street. This is the building, if people are familiar, if you were to drive up behind the courthouse on West Elm Street on the left, just before the Elm Court Hotel, it's a five-story brick structure that was burnt out in a fire nine years ago. Uh, the city over the past, one, there are two parcels identified here. One parcel contains the building, the other parcel is the parking lot that's immediately adjacent to the building. It looks like one parcel driving by, but it's actually two parcels. Uh, the uh, property is, the two properties, the two parcels are among a couple dozen properties that were identified in the uh, urban revitalization plan uh, that the council approved during the past year. Uh, the properties were acquired. Uh, one property was acquired in 2015, the other in 2016. Uh, as you know, Councillor, that the, the property owner has up to a year after that date to come back to the land court and petition to pay off the, the unpaid balance. Um, so these properties have been in queue. As we look at implementing the urban revitalization plan uh, as approved by the council, we know that this is going to be a long-term program over a number of years, but we have prioritized at the top of the list the few parcels that are already owned by the city. As there's no acquisition cost, we can at least get those properties moving. Uh, in terms of uh, the process with these properties, I believe that they were originally filed last fall, I want to say November, um, for consideration by the council uh, to approve the transfer of the two parcels along. I want to say I think there were maybe three other parcels in that group at the time uh, to the BRA. Um, in terms of the condition, I think that's part of the question on the resolve also. Uh, the condition of the building is poor. There's no question about that. I don't think anyone that's ever driven by the building would be surprised uh, that, I mean, it looks like it was hit by a bomb and it's been sitting that way for years. Uh, open and exposed to the weather. 
Uh, we've had growing concerns uh, about uh, the building since last fall. Uh, the planner, Rob May, had uh, an initial review of the building done. The intent of that review was not to uh, condemn it or look to tear it down. It was actually the intent was to put together information about the building to help in the marketing of the building once it went over to the BRA. Uh, that report, though, did come back with some significant concerns about the integrity of the structure. So subsequent to that, Mr. Kasiri, uh, I don't want to say conducted, commissioned, uh, commissioned his own uh, study of the property uh, by an engineer that came back with the same concerns and probably stronger and more definitively than the, uh, than the original report. So uh, based upon that, we initiated a procurement process to try to get a handle on what the cost of taking the building down would be. It was Mr. Kasiri's strong recommendation that the building was gonna have to come down, uh, that it would create a public safety hazard to allow it to remain up for any length of time. Uh, this is a really unique one, and based upon our recent experience with the Kresge building and the Ganley building, uh, where we did have estimates and idea of what the cost of those demos were, uh, we really thought the prudent course of action before doing anything was to do a procurement to find out exactly what the number would be to address the situation. Uh, Mr. Kasiri had mentioned verbal estimates of a half to three quarters of a million dollars. Uh, but we didn't have anything concrete. And I think in terms of bringing it to the council, we wanted to have a plan with a price tag and a plan as to how to pay for it to submit to the council uh, for consideration. So that procurement process was just completed very recently. You can get the specifics from uh, Mr. Kasiri in terms of uh, the prices that were bid and checking out the references. But there was a wide, wide array of uh, prices in response to the RFP. So the low response and the good news is that the low bid is 330 some odd thousand dollars, half of what we thought it might be. Um, but to show the wide difference of opinion, two of the bids were in excess of a million dollars. So th there was really a wide, wide range of prices between different contractors in dealing with this building. Much uh, like the mess we're dealing with over at the corner of Elliott and North Montello um, is that one of the concerns uh, was the presence and potential presence of asbestos in the building and what the cost is to properly remove and dispose of asbestos. And that complicates the demo and, and certainly significantly increases the price. So as I mentioned at the last appearance in front of you, uh, we have um, filed for the next meeting uh, in a, a request for an appropriation for the money. The request and the game plan that we will propose to the council at the next meeting, but I'm assuming you'd like to know where we're going, uh, by transferring the property to the BRA, upon the BRA assuming ownership, the BRA will register the building with the city's vacant and abandoned building registry. At that point, Mr. I assume, that Mr. Kasseri will notify the BRA uh, that the structure needs to come down. I won't speak for Mr. Jenkins, but I anticipate that he'll communicate back to the city that they do not have the available funding to take the building down. At that point, under the city's vacant abandoned building ordinance, Mr. Kasseri could go forward with the demo of the building, utilizing funds from the revolving fund of the vacant abandoned building property ordinance rather than having to ask you to go into the city stabilization funds. As the ordinance requires, a lien would be placed on the property for the cost of the demo. So the city's position on the property would be, pres would be protected for the amount of the demo by a lien placed against the property. Uh, whether or not we would ever be able to collect that full amount in full based upon the future value of the property, I'm not here to represent that. I don't know exactly what the value of the property will be when they put it out on the market. Um, but I suspect it's probably a number less than $330,000. Um, so that's essentially where we're at, and uh, I'll be happy to entertain questions or all of the, uh, the other individuals invited in the uh, 
uh, resolve are also here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council, Council Farwell. I guess Councilor Monaghan and I had an interest in this because on, on March 7th, I'm not a member of the Real Estate Committee, but I happened to attend because there was something there of, of interest. And I actually sat next to the mayor. And uh, I think at that meeting you had to leave for a school committee meeting because it was a Tuesday night. But Correct. Time was of the essence. It was important to transfer the property to the BRA. There was a round robin discussion about a few things, and I think at one point there was an amendment offered that we wanted to make sure that that property was not given to a nonprofit because we want some taxable revenue coming in. And never once did you or Mr. Jenkins or Mr. May mention that, oh, by the way, we're going to have to spend some money to take that building down. And I think that's interesting because since this incident occurred, there was a 2009 report about the condition of the building. It mentioned that the basement might be flooded, mentioned there might be mercury in the property because of some broken light bulbs. And then I guess in January of 2017, around the 21st, there was a report from, I want to say, Churchill Engineering or some engineering firm about the, the structure being compromised. And again, when something comes before the council, it just seems to me we ought to be given all of the relevant facts about the issue. And I think that's important because we're starting the downtown urban renewal project. Right. So that's my concern is yep. that at least going forward, we've got to make sure that we have all of the information to take the appropriate action. Because, for example, if I had known that on that evening, I might have said to you, you know what, if we're going to pay to clear that land, turn the property over to Mr. Malley, let him put an open air parking lot there and let him sell premium spots to the Brockton District Courthouse because they always have an overflow. But, but that wasn't done. So let me turn next to the abandoned well, building. Well, can, can I just respond yes, quickly to ahead. that, if that's okay, Mr. President? So uh, I, I hear your concern loud and clear, Counselor. Um, I think the situation, as I recall that night, is I did ask the chair of the committee if I could go first because I did have to chair a school committee meeting on the same evening. So I did make kind of general overall remarks about the, um, about the revitalization plan, the importance as you described of transferring these properties to the BRA uh, to get this revitalization plan going. And I think that not specific to this one, but in general, with some of these vacant and abandoned buildings, there is a sense of urgency because honestly, you know, I'm tired of tearing them down and I know many of the councilors have commented to me that you know, we'd like to see some of these buildings saved. And whether it was the Gardner building before my administration, the Kresge building more recently, the concerns now about the structure at the Ganley building, which we'll discuss momentarily. Um, this is a big issue in terms of these uh, long-term vacant, abandoned, uh, particularly large buildings downtown. So. I don't know that it, anything would have changed. I think in fairness to Mr. Jenkins and Mr. May, um, they are not directly involved in any way in the, the procurement process and the evaluating the condition of the building. That's Mr. Kassiri and Mr. Morris. Uh, so I guess if, if someone's gonna have to own this, it's gonna be me, because uh, I was probably the one person there that was aware of both balls being in the air at the same time. So uh, there was certainly no intent on our part I don't think, and maybe this is why it didn't jump to the front of my mind that evening uh, during my brief opening remarks, Counselor, I don't think anyone that's ever driven by the building over these many years would be surprised to learn that the building is not in good shape and has to come down. So, I mean, it, I, you know, I, I yeah. I certainly agree with that. I think the surprise is at least people with whom I interact, they don't understand why we don't market that property and provide the reports that have been done on it and say to someone, you spend the 338000 just give us a dollar for the property. Why spend the money for us to do it? Why assume that work? And, and the next thing that I would well, say- Well, I, I think in terms of some of that, we have to uh, have Mr. Kassiri and Mr. May can respond to those. I, I, I would yeah. agree. As a matter of fact, I have a question for Mr. Kassiri okay. on the abandoned Thank you, Mr. building Mayor. fund. Mr. Kassiri, good evening. Mr. Kasseri, correct me if I'm wrong, but the abandoned building revolving account, 
isn't that traditionally used for properties where the owner can't be contacted and there are exigent circumstances that demand that we take some form of action, whether it's take the building down or we make some repairs so that it's structurally sound. I did not think, and I do not remember, though I have been out of government for a while since I was in the mayor's office, that we would use that for property owned either by the city or the BRA. Now, have I got that wrong? Is the abandoned building fund supposedly to take down city buildings that are within the possession of the city? Well, this is, this is a unique situation. This hasn't arisen before, so we haven't used it on a city building before this way. Well, whether it's unique or not, the legality of it, if, if the fund is set up for a given purpose, yeah. and this doesn't fit within the purpose for which that fund was intended, then why do we do it? I'm not here to, I don't know why, how to fund it, council. That's why I, I filed for the council to decide if I could use the vacant money that way. Well, you know, it's an ordinance that the council created and I would think has the power to say, I think that's a good use of that money. Um, yeah, go ahead, fellas. Uh, council, any objections if the solicitor speaks? He's not an invited guest on no this matter. No. Okay, good evening. Uh, Good evening, Council President, uh, Councilor Farwell. In order to try to be more responsive to that issue, uh, the abandoned building vacant properties uh, ordinance contains what you had recited, but is not limiting to that area as well. If uh, the commissioner sees fit that certain properties expand beyond the particular ones identified, he's able to use funds. So there is no restriction or prohibition on using those funds. It's not stated as such, but there's nothing that restricts it either. And in well, a situation where there are exigent circumstances, a concern of uh, something of immediacy, uh, he moves forward and he can, he can pull the trigger and exercise uh, funds of that nature in order to make a curative situation. Well, let me say to you, in terms of exigent circumstances, that can't exist because we allowed it to go through the winter of 2017. We knew that that building was structurally compromised as far back as 2009. We did a report on it in January of 2017. So you can't say in March, oh goodness, we've got to take it down, we've got a real problem. If it were that serious, we would have, we would have had something before the council long before now. My concern is that if you read that ordinance about abandoned buildings, it talks about sending certified mail to the last known address of the owner. It talks about all of the different things that an ordinary reasonable person would assume pertains to an unknown or unavailable property owner and the city now recognizes that property has to come down. I do not see that as a building demolition fund available to the building department. I would, I would suggest that if you, because if you deplete the funds in the abandoned building account, you're going to have to replace them, you're going to need them. My suggestion is that you put in some type of a financial order and let it rise or fall with the vote of the council. But, but I can tell you from the people I speak to, they're incredulous that we would have a piece of property in the center of the sixth or seventh largest city and we're going to spend $338,000 in taxpayer money when we should market that property, make full disclosure as to what the deficiencies are, and at least first find out if we have a potential buyer. I don't believe that's been done, has it? I'm, un I'm unaware of the um, communications that were either attempted to be made to a prior owner or were made to a prior owner. I am aware that the building commissioner indicated it got to a point where there were exits and circumstances. The situation was identified to be far worse than previously thought and certain action was taken in order to secure the building and make arrangements to take it down before there was some other type of uh, incident or accident that would have occurred. So he would have to speak to whether or not there was any successful communications, but as far as the determination to move against the building, uh, I, I endorsed and supported his action at that point in time. Again, what he saw and what basis he made as a determination of ex exigent circumstances doesn't mean it, it occurred that night. It means that he I then identified at a certain point in time that the building had deteriorated to a state where he thought some further action had to be taken. 
well, something will come before us, either in terms of a transfer or an appropriation. So rather than take up more time this evening and hopefully at the next meeting, we'll have a, a full Council, I, I, I also, uh, I, think, I think you're on point, Council, relative to the actual language from a legal perspective. Nothing against the city solicitors or fine attorney, but we have our own legislative council. So I might ask you to confer with Attorney Gilday um, to, to get his opinion relative to the intent and what can or cannot be used, because I do, I do think you bring up some valid legal uh, terms there. I do. So that's my humble suggestion, but I think speaking to legislative council, um, and he may concur 100% with, with the attorney, um, but Attorney Gilday is our legal counsel, so maybe you should confer with him as well. Well, my, my thought is to, unless someone else needs to ask a question, is to move to uh, table this until our second I, FinCom meeting in, uh, a move to postpone until our second FinCom meeting in May. And that would give us sufficient time to talk with Attorney Gilday. I, I'd ask you just to hold up for one second because you, you brought up a point when you had the, the floor to the mayor and the mayor um, wasn't able to answer that, which was legitimate. And it was relative to having either Mr. May or the superintendent relative to selling it as is for a buck. And that answer hasn't come back, Council. So I think that while this gentleman here, you might want to speak to the parties that the mayor recommended. Well, I, 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 I would just throw it open to all of you then, to, uh, to the mayor and to Mr. May and, and Mr. Jenkins. Any objection to trying to market it, and find out if we can sell it for for uh, a nominal fee with the 338000 being borne by I, I the I think that, um, to, to get back to your question of a moment ago, I think we took a very prudent course of action. You're right, I was made aware in January of the uh, report uh, that had been commissioned by Mr. Kasseri. Uh, we almost immediately began a procurement process to find out what the cost would be, knowing full well that once we had a plan, that we would be coming to the council to request the, the funds. So I mean, there was never any intent to go down a path without the council. The resolve was filed a couple weeks before. We've had a chance to get the final bids in and then file the request for the appropriation, which my understanding is has already been filed and should come up on the next FinCom agenda. So in terms of postponement, no problem. We've postponed this once before. But perhaps, Council, I could suggest where the other, where the request for the funding is going to come up on the uh, next FinCom agenda, you could pull the whole thing together at that uh, same FinCom agenda. Otherwise, we're going to be going on and on and on. Um, the and, and, ju and just for the record, Mr. Mayor, the first legal notice in the newspaper for the RFP to take that building down, I believe, was on March 15th. So between January when the report was done to March 15th, apparently that building wasn't so severely compromised. Well, I, I think that, there, I, first of all, I don't think anyone said it was gonna fall down that day. And certainly I know you've been provided with the copy of the reports. So you yes. know what the report says. Um, but just because the, le the legal notice comes out, there's work done by the procurement officer yes. in between, a significant amount of work. The legal notice doesn't come out until the, the RFP is actually being posted to the public. So I can assure you that shortly after becoming aware that we had an issue and us looking at this and saying, oh boy, uh, how are we gonna pay for this? And in terms of wanting to come to the council with a proposal with a number as to what it would cost and a plan as to how to pay for it to submit to the council uh, for your consideration and approval. Um, I don't think we really want to use the stabilization fund only as a last resort. So um, we certainly spent some time looking at other potential sources of funding and the law office did review uh, the agenda, not the agenda, the ordinance, excuse me, uh, and did give me the opinion that if the BRA owned the property and they had registered it as a vacant building with the city, then that building would be um, the building, in other words, the addressing the safety concerns at that building um, would be a legitimate request for use of the funds. The alternative, it wasn't the only alternative, just like with the Ganley building, you know, the engineer, as you read the report, does offer other steps that could be taken, but ultimately draws the conclusion that they would be, um, 
you know, the chance of saving the building would be remote and that they would be cost prohibitive. Those are my words, but that's a paraphrase of what it says. Uh, so it wasn't just a snap decision to say, oh, let's tear it down. What's it going to cost? Uh, upon a review of that report, the report clearly indicated that that was the reasonable uh, way to address the concerns. And we began a procurement process. And upon completion of that process, we have filed a, a request for the, for the appropriation, uh, which you'll be hearing at the next FinCon meeting. Right, so well, we're not going anywhere without the council approval, nor did we ever think we were. But you can see why there seem to be some smoke and mirrors going on. No, here, I, right? I really don't, council. This is, this is uh, the 1st of May, end of April, 1st of May since January to do a whole procurement process and get an order filed and get in here. We're talking about 90 days. I don't think that the report indicated the building was going to fall down in 90 days, but it certainly did express concerns. And I think that the uh, commissioner, when he discussed it with me, expressed some specific concerns of one of the walls uh, of the building. And he can talk to you a lot more about the condition of the building than I can. Um, but I don't think there's a long time to take care of this without endangering public safety. And the report that we commissioned indicates that saving the building is cost prohibitive. So if the cost of saving the building is far in excess of the market value of the property, and I think that's pretty obvious, then why would we go through this whole process of trying to get someone to come in and get it, meanwhile something happens? So. Do you, you, know, do you object to marketing it first to see if someone will buy it and assume the liability for the I, the I think I'd have to visit that with the BRA and the legal counsel and the planner. Um, I, it doesn't sound like the most prudent course to me, but we'll consider it. I mean, we're going to be back in front of you at the next FinCon meeting and certainly have the opportunity to discuss that option. Okay. One last question yeah. to Mr. Caseri. Yeah, can I say one thing? Counsel? Yes. Um, so you read the report. And the report talks about how the, the roof had fallen onto the fifth floor and then the fifth floor had fallen onto the fourth floor, but that the um, engineer didn't gain access to the building because he didn't correct. think it was safe to do so. So after I read the report, and I didn't even read the report until December, late December, and I had a conversation with my um, building inspectors and we decided to go enter the building. So I entered the building late December or mid-December, and we found it to be far worse than the report had said. We thought we were going to be able to enter the building and walk around. We could only go five feet in that building without a fear of falling through the floor. And the entire stairwell from all the way up to all the way to the basement has collapsed into the building as well. So you can, the council can delay this, and you can certainly go through a procurement process, but I want to go on the record as saying I think that building should come down as quickly as we can do it. Because masonry walls aren't meant to, you can't go infinitely high with masonry walls without trusses on floors that hold the walls together. The, build, the building wasn't designed, the floors weren't designed to take the load of the roof, another floor on top of the fourth floor all soaking wet. It's not designed to do that. So now you have, you have um, masonry walls that aren't being held together by the floors anymore. The floors hold the whole thing together. On, on what so, date did you go in to make these observations? On the exact date, I wrote Approximately. some, I wrote some notes down. Um, the day we entered, um, I visited the building in early December. I don't have the exact date. Okay, so if, if that's, and I have no doubt that that's an accurate representation. Yeah. If you made those observations in December, yeah. then why wouldn't that information be passed on to the city council when we were asked to transfer ownership of that building to Mr. Jenkins? I have why, no, I why, have. why would we stick him with that issue if it's that severe? Why wouldn't someone come before the council and say, look, We've got a building right on West Elm Street. It's got to come down. It's dangerous. I don't come to council to take the building down. I sent a notice to the mayor and to the real estate custodian on January 3rd that, in my opinion, based on the report and my observations, that the building had to come down. I then uh, got a meeting together with Jay and Mike Morris, Jay Condon. I asked uh, Michael if we could do a procurement process so I could get a figure before I came to council 
I didn't want to, I didn't know what the figure was. I had uh, an estimate of $750,000 from one company. We uh, put it out for procurement. We got prices of 1.4 million, 1.2 million, 800,000, 600,000, all the way down to $338,500. And in my mind, the longer you delay this, I don't know how good long that quote's gonna be good for. If, if uh, prevailing wage changes, the, the whole bid process has to be done all no, over I, again. No, I'm familiar with that. I, so, I would just say to the three of you, yeah. and I'm only speaking for myself, not for my colleagues, if you ask us to transfer a property to anyone. I didn't whether, ask you no, to transfer I've just said to all three of you, if you'll listen for a minute, yeah. because you all communicate. As a matter of fact, you have prep periods before you come in the council for FinCom, do you not? Yeah. On Monday mornings, don't we all get together and decide what we, information? We have meetings pretty right. much every morning. Yeah. And I'm just saying that the, th the three of you going forward, if you want us to transfer a property to someone, then I think you ought to say, oh, by the way, we're probably going to have to demolish the building and it's going to cost this. There should be greater sharing of information. And I'm not going to beat up on you or the it, mayor okay, or anyone counsel. else. When I you say the three of us want to transfer it, I have nothing to do with that. I well, don't transfer well, anything. In, I'm not able, I don't know any part of the planning process or anything. I'm just telling you as a building commission what has to go on. I don't care who owns it. I don't care if you sell it. It doesn't matter to me. All I'm telling you is at some point I'm going to revisit the building often through this process. And at some point I might close off West Elm Street. I'll have to fence off. A, you know, you have a building six feet away from this building. I understand. That's occupied. I've, I've been by there many, many times. So I'm just saying you're those, involved. Those are my only concerns. I I'm don't just, care about anything else. I'm just saying you're involved because you made a visit in December. Yeah. And obviously you must have known because you're involved in buildings and transfers. And, and I would hope that the city would let you know we were transferring this building to the BRA. I, I didn't know that. Council. You didn't know that? No. Okay, then I, I, think, I think I'm all done for now. I think there's, there's more that... Uh, will come out when we have our meeting on any funding sources. Thank you, Council. And I thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. you, Council. Council Beauregard followed by Council Bonds. Oh, I'm sorry. Council Bonds, go first. I'm sorry. Um, I wanted Ashley the Roberts well, Mr. To President, can I make a final comment response to Council Farwell? I think he put some new information on the table there, made some new comments. So just real quickly to be clear, Councillor, first of all, the comment about don't you do FinCom prep meetings to get ready I meet with the de key department heads of this city almost every single day at 9 a.m., typically at least four out of the five days every week. The only time we don't meet at 9 a.m. is when my schedule doesn't allow me to be there. We've been doing that for two and a half years. So on a Monday of a FinCom, we certainly utilize that as one of our topics to discuss what's on that night's agenda because we've got everyone sitting at the table. But it's no different than a hundred other topics we may touch upon when we have the department heads together. Four days of the week, it's the key, what we call the executive team, the key dozen or so department heads. On Wednesdays, it's citywide all department heads. It's a model that I adopted from the city of Newton uh, to address what I felt when I took office was a horrible lack of communication amongst city departments, and that I found everyone was operating in silos, the left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing, and I'll tell you that these daily meetings have been a tremendous success, that we have a, a, a level of cooperation and communication between our departments in this city now that's unprecedented in the history of the city, and I believe that's because of the relationships that have developed and the ability to communicate in person on a daily basis with each other. So yes, when we have a FinCom on a Monday night, on the Monday morning meeting, do we talk about FinCom? Absolutely. I try to be prepared for everything that I speak on publicly. And when I ask for department heads to comment to me regarding an item that might be on that night's FinCom, the prep is for me, it's to make sure that I am fully up to speed and that I know what the department heads know and that I'm prepared to answer your questions so that we use the council's time productively. So I think to insinuate that it's anything other than trying to come in here so Mayor, and do the best job we can. I think you gave okay. point across, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If, if I could, my, my last comment is, 
people have a We're moving on in about one second. I'm sick of this, quite honestly. We're going to okay. move on in about one second. Thank we, you, Mr. We have President. a different management style. I told my department heads, just go into the council, tell them the truth, tell them what they want to hear, and if you don't know something, tell them you'll get back to them. We didn't have any round robin discussions in advance. I trusted them to know their department. Well, I trust them too. That's why I want Council Beauregard, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm asking for both Roberts to come down, if oh, that's all right. I think that's appropriate. Okay, thank you. Good evening, thank you for being here. Thank you for coming a couple weeks ago when we continue right. the matter. At least I get to speak now. So. Counselor, you, you have the floor, Counselor. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, thank you both for being here, and I believe that um, these gentlemen can help us along with this. Uh, they're both part of the Economic Development Initiative. They were part of the developer's tour on uh, April 5th, and uh, though the weather was not the best, I know that we informed individuals throughout the state and actually from out of state what was available. So I believe that maybe you could, uh, how would I say, enlighten us a little bit further on what, you know, if there was any interest in that building or if you would consider pursuing informing individuals of the availability of that building. I'll, I'll start out. Okay. Uh, yes, Councilor, thank you um, very much. And, and of course you were, you were present and, and, and I appreciate your, your support because that is your award and um, you carry a lot of weight there. Uh, on April 5th, the, the mayor our, uh, and our partners at uh, Metro South Chamber of Commerce, uh, E21, Redevelopment Authority, um, hosted a uh, reception for developers to bring them into the community. It's part of our uh, downtown action strategy to get them to see the properties that we have available, both properties that we have uh, in our own portfolio, and also to meet some uh, additional property owners downtown who are either looking for tenants or looking for uh, redevelopment, co-development opportunities. Uh, we had about 35 uh, developers, um, and we had uh, Marty Jones from MassWorks, uh, or excuse me, Mass Development there also. And um, I think the point being made is that we are marketing these buildings. And the whole point of us, or at least from my perspective, of the city trying to transfer these properties to BRA is that these buildings need a lot of work and they need it now. We lost the Kresge building, we lost the Gardner building, um, we are in danger of losing some of these other buildings. We need to get them into private hands and have private investors um, spending money to secure the structures first and then to rehabilitate them. Uh, in the case of, um, uh, as, as we see what, what's moving forward here, now, um, Robert, you've done a couple of tours with people sure. above and beyond that, um, but uh, we are marketing those buildings. We are trying to get people into those uh, and, and investing in Brockton. A couple of things. Um, just to echo what Rob said, the buildings, let's be honest, the buildings that we're looking at and that you've given to the redevelopment authority or are proposing to give to the redevelopment authority are, are what commercial developers would grade as probably like a D. They only go to D. And D is what these buildings mostly are. The best building you gave us was 19 Main. We had five developers just since that April, that April meeting go through that building. Uh, there is a process, we're going to talk to City Council President uh, about our process for vetting out these developers who are interested in that property. My board meets tomorrow. They're going to look at the process and they'll probably contact, I know the Chairman's probably going to co contact City Council President about that process. We've talked a little bit about it, Council President. Um, just to echo what the Bear is saying also, the communication, and when we've talked about this, the communication is it's probably not what it should have been but it is better now. Uh, you mentioned that the mayor has these meetings. Well, I've been kindly invited to the last three meetings, <laughs> Monday meetings. The BRA is really a quasi entity. It's not part of the city. I kind of wish it was, but it's not. Um, so I wasn't, we, I wasn't part of those meetings that the mayor had his council or his, meet, his Monday morning department head meetings. I've been invited to the last four um, just to talk about things that the BRA is doing and the things that the city is doing. Rob and I meet every other Monday. Uh, 
the communication with us is good. We're improving our communication. As I told Jim Casari this morning, I saw him twice today in meetings. Lucky you. That's usually not a good thing when I see the building superintendent twice. It's usually complaining about a building or a property we own, but it's just the communication. I think I want to echo to the council um, to hold on. You, these properties are, are not mysteries. They could have been marketed long ago. A matter of fact, if anybody was interested and at the tour we took, somebody would have pointed this building out and said, can I go into that? <laughs> Nobody wants to go into that building. The value in that building, in my opinion, is after it's torn down. The lot is big enough, the two lots. Um, to wait, to go through that process, my opinion, Council Farwell, I think you're gonna waste your time. I don't think you're going to get an investor to come into Brockton to invest, as the range the, the commissioner pointed out, is from 300,000 to over a million dollars? Let's be honest. Is a property downtown Brockton worth a million dollars at this point that you have to demo? It's a black hole. It is. Um, we've had people come out today interested in Frederick Douglass Way, the um, Grayson Hotel. Um, I, what I'd like to do is for us to stay on track. Those properties were identified and everyone know about them in the revitalization plan. They've all been identified, it's no secret. If you read the plan or even the blueprint for Brockton, you knew the properties we identified and what we were intending to do with them. So with that said, if I have any other questions. Council, you have the floor. Uh, at, at this point, thank you. This is the information we wanted to hear. I was hoping you'd say more people looked at 47 West Elm. But having said this, if someone were to express an interest, obviously they don't want the building, but they want the location. Because it is ideal, certainly for the, the courthouse, for example, and it is, how would I say it, part of the entranceway into downtown. Now, I mean, my suggestion, similar to my colleagues, was if they wanted, wish to purchase it, then we could turn around and say, all right, you can have it for a dollar because you will be responsible for demolishing it. So now, I'm, does that take yeah. place? Uh, Councilor, that, that could take place. Okay. Um, is it realistic? I, I don't believe so. Um, when you have a building like that, um, and, and we already know that it's, it's going to be what we call a hot load, it, there, there's asbestos and some other materials in there that require special handling. We don't know what the entire contamination load is going to be. We as a government entity have a bid. We can hold somebody accountable to that. Um, a, a independent party to come in and buy a property that they don't know where this hole is going to end, uh, even if they bought it for a dollar, um, their liability is on the upside of that. So if they get away with 300,000, that's, that's wonderful. If it goes higher than that, they're on the hook. And at some point in time, you know, the development, the demo you know, could spiral out of control. I'm not saying that it will. I know that Mr. Caseri's done a really good job at at working with his contractors, but a That's developer a is not going to put their money and risk time and interest on uh, potentially de de demolishing a property that may spiral out of control. Okay, that part I understand. So I guess now one of the things we need to I, be understand, and this would be part of both your, you know, how would I say, areas, would be where, where do we see the value of the property if that building didn't even exist on it? The value is in the, the size of the lot and its location. There, there is an excellent opportunity uh, being so close to the, the courthouse um, and, and in between Maine and Warren that there's an excellent opportunity for redevelopment there. No, that part I understand, but I, I'm saying that maybe what we need to see is what the value would be for the land. Oh, dollar-wise? Dollar-wise, yes, more so. I would defer to the uh, city assessor or uh, an appraiser. I would defer to an appraiser. Okay, Once thank the you. the building's down, I would defer to an appraiser. Believe thank me, you. I don't want, yeah. the BRA does not want to be liable for this building. I understand. With the reports and the information that's out there. That's why we've talked to Mr. Kisseri. Um, if we register it, they go through. We have a bid in hand. I think that's just a, a real good bid in hand. My opinion, the building probably, I agree with you, Council Farwell, the building should have probably came down years ago. But we have a bid in hand. 
a real good bid, I take it just to get that building down. You'll get more for your money to take that building down in that vacant, the vacant lot than you will with a developer giving it to them for a dollar. And then what do we get? Well, you, get, you may get a new building if he tears it down, but you may be waiting a couple of years before he decides to kind of do something with that property, with that building. That's my only fear. Thank, thank you very much. Are you good, thank Council? You, Mr. President, yes. Council Bonds. Just a quick question, Kasari. Yep. Um, as you approach. So uh, the evaluation that Council <coughs> Carl was referring to and the one that you said that you read and you know had gone in and saw that the conditions were a lot worse than what was reported, was that the only report that had been, uh, I guess, commissioned or drafted since the fire nine years ago on that property? I think there was an original report done in 2009 and then Mr. May had a report done, and I think when Rob May had the report done in, in October, he wasn't looking at a, a report that was going to tell us to take the building down. He was trying to find a way that you could rehab these buildings, but then we discovered that the building was much too far gone for that to be like, likely. I mean, if you were going to try to save that building, you're talking what, millions, millions of dollars to sure. save that building. So, I, I, I guess my, my whole thing is um, it's kind of a, along the same lines as uh, Councilor Farrell because I was at I, I'm on, I'm on the real estate committee, so I was at that meeting when this whole thing kind of came up. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's it was no, it's no secret that that building should have been down years ago after the fire. It probably should have been demolished, just like the the antique building. In my opinion, it should have gone down immediately. Um, but, you know, nevertheless, it stayed up, and now, you know, like he said, there's this sense of urgency now to take it down when it has been in that condition for years. And I, well, you, 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 you're actually the first person I've ever heard say that a building has no top. That, that's the only thing I can think of, that the building is just open and exposed to the elements. Has no windows either. And it has, right, well, they were blown out by the fire. But um, my, my thing is, is, I guess. Can I, can I say one thing, though? Uh, well, well uh, let, me, let me just kind of. I will, so yep. if, if there, was a, if there were some kind of initial report done in this nine years, why had it not come down in that time? I, I guess I'm just trying to wrap myself, wrap my head around it because it appears that, um, and I know I'm, I'm confident this didn't happen, but it just appears that when this came up before the real estate committee, uh, uh, commission, uh, committee, that the idea was for it to come down, but that it wasn't for that this, for the city to use our funds or our resources in any way to have it come down, that it would then be marketed to someone with the understanding that any kind of saving or rehabilitation of this building was completely inappropriate and not gonna happen, but that somebody else would be responsible. And then as everything kind of started to unfold, it appeared that maybe even Mr. Jenkins was kind of, not set up, but that he was sent in uh, to acquire the building knowing that the building would have to come down using city resources, never with the understanding that it would ever be marketed, as I was to believe. And then, I mean, as time went on, I kind of figured out, like, oh, well, the city had it in the mind all along that we were going to pay for the building to come down. Then I started going back. Well, why, why didn't it come down before? And then now hearing this stuff about the report not coming out until, you know, eight months ago when the building has been in that condition for nine years. So it, it, you, you have to see where it's a little, um, it's a little, you know, conspicuous, like, well, not conspicuous, what, what is it? Nefarious. I, I mean, that's a strong word, but it, it appears that's a, that that's way. That's a real strong word. And, it, you know. it is, and, and that's the thing <laughs> I don't understand. That's what I'm trying I'm, to figure out. What, I'd what? like to answer you. Okay. So we have been in that building. We go in that building every year. Mm -hmm. And this year, it's far worse than it was last year. Now, when we were in it a year ago, it was on the cusp of being, we got to do something with this, so the, the hope has always been that somebody would come by the building and rehab it. Now it's to the point that it's, it's just too far gone, in my opinion. Well, it we, isn't we as if we've ignored that. the building. We've, we've been in it. Okay, I, I think we all agree that the building needs to come down. I think the question is there's just some confusion in my mind as to, I, I, I guess, the discussions or the decision or who was involved and making sure that it came down in, in this particular vein and not another one that may have actually uh, worked out better for everybody involved so that there weren't so many questions. Like it's just, it doesn't seem like there's a real transparent kind of 
of um, process with this, with this particular building. And, and my other concern too is um, how many other buildings have gone down with this demolition fund in this kind of situ in this situation? We took 121 Main Street, which is the Kresge building. We took it down with that. See, and that's, that's the same thing. There was controversy behind that one too. No, there wasn't. Yeah, it, it kind of was because, I mean, on no, Friday, what, ha what happened by was Monday it was down. And that building had been like that as well for years, umpteen years. So you have to kind of see where it, it, it looks a little. Um, Counselor. Just questionable. 121 Main Street, the year before we took it down, we had, we, the facade was falling into the street. Right. So using the vacant money because the owner was unresponsive, we spent 60 or so thousand dollars taking the facade off that building so we wouldn't have to close Main Street and High Street, or Frederick Douglass Way, I mean. So then a year went by, and the building started falling into the street again. There was no facade left to take off. The building was falling onto the sidewalk and into the street. We did an emergency procurement on that building with permission from the state, DCAM, and they agreed it was an emergency, so we could go, I believe we went with a three quote process. We didn't have to go out for RFP because it was an emergency that that building come down. That's what happened in that building. There's no mystery there and there's nothing nefarious, Counselor. Well, again, I mean, that, we're not here talking about that building. That building's already down and we discussed it with, with Mr. Mullally and he's come before the council and talked with myself and Council Monty on several occasions about you know, kind of their position on that, but that's, that's not the end of the day. I, I, I guess my question though was, my original question is, from the time that that building burned up, and I remember it burning, to the time that this report came in that you read in December of last year, there was never any time in between that to do anything with that, it just sat there and you know, everybody looked there. out the window like, oh, it's still up it, today. And oh, the, the Tacoa building sitting there doing the same thing right now. I'm sorry, say that one more time? The one on, um, Name of the street, Petronelli. Petronelli Way is doing the same thing right now. Okay, so are we going? We're going to be here way? next year for the Tacoa building, and I'm going to be telling you it has to come down unless somebody buys that building or something happens with it. Okay, we're well, going to be doing the same the thing again. Right, and the, the by same. all means, right. that's we're not. That's, that's not, not before us. Let's stay right. on point. Right. Well, that, that is the point. No, that's not the. No, it's not the point. My point it's not is. not the point. We're not talking about that building, sir. We're talking about what's okay. on the agenda item. Let's keep on track. All right, and this is part of being on track. I'm responsible for telling this council and this city when something like this has to occur. It's incumbent upon me, it's statutorily required of me to do my job. It's not fun to come in here and do this and tell you these things have to happen and that you've got to come up with $340,000. That's a tough job. I hate this part of the job, but it's the most necessary part of the job. If that building hurts somebody, it, it's not on me now because I've told everybody. I put the reports out there. You all know it. So if that building remains and it hurts somebody, it's going to cost the city far more than three hundred and forty thousand dollars. And again, I don't think anybody's disagreeing that the building needs to come down. That's not what's at issue. I I could be wrong, but so I, that was the issue. I no no. Everybody agrees that it should come down, that it should have gone down years ago. Actually, that's what it is. The building should have gone down years ago, years ago. But I, I guess it's just kind of, I, 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 don't, I really don't even know how else to explain it. It's just kind of the way that it appears. And, and again, the way that it came up in, the real, in real estate, it wasn't this urgent. It was kind of like, you know, um, here are these couple of buildings, can the BRA have it? And then all of a sudden it blew up like, oh my God, this thing is a death trap. And, and it needs to come down. It, it's just the way that the, the, the sequence went. And I, I guess I have another question. So how much is in the balance of this fund? How, how much, what's the balance of this demolition uh, fund? We, how much is in the account now? Yes. Please. It's about $550,000 in there. Okay. Um, it's an account that grows. We don't spend as much as comes in. So I expect that next year it might be $900,000 in there. It, it doesn't go away. And everything that we spend out of it is lean, so it eventually comes back to the city. It's a revolving fund. Every, every dime we spend out of that goes on a property as a lien. When we bought up a vacant building, mm -hmm. it goes on that property as a lien. When we do a, a cleanup on a vacant building, it goes on as a lien. So all the money that's expended out of it is still our money at some point when someone buys one of these 
vacant properties, they'll have to pay that lien off and it will replenish the fund. Okay, and how often has that happened maybe in the last two years? Uh, money coming in that's been replenished? Well, b yeah, based on that formula. So the lien is put on, somebody buys it, pays it off. Yeah, I'm not sure on that, but the, just the fees alone come in every year. For 500 vacant buildings, we get fees on them every year. So if, if your building's been vacant for, if you've been part of this registry for five years and you're still owning a vacant building, I think you're paying $1,500 a year. So this fund is growing. As, a, as an owner, as an absentee owner, I pay these fees? Yeah, all the bank does. Who's ever responsible for the vacant building pays the fees. They have to register their building. How long does it stay on that register? Until it's occupied. Okay, so it doesn't, it doesn't get like a charge off after like 10 years or no, something never. like that? No, the idea of the ordinance actually is to f encourage reoccupancy of vacant buildings. Okay. Um, okay, I, I guess that, that's it for now, um, Mr. Cathery. Can I just ask, just ask Mr. May one more question, too? Yep. Council, point of information relative to the lien being recorded against the property owner. Mm -hmm. In this specific case, if the lien is $380,000 mm -hmm. relative to the demolition from the revolving account, there is no guarantee whatsoever that will be replenished 100%. That's property question. could sell for two hundred grand, and we're out 180000 from the revolving account. That was kind of my point. It could just keep going and going and going and we never get repaid. It's just an outstanding lien. So I was asking if it ever gets, you know, gets written off or if we can claim it as a loss or whatever. The city, the city would, would discharge the lien and we'd eat the, we'd okay. eat the dollar amount. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so just to kind of get back to what Council Borough was saying about the value of the land. Oh, the, the, the space, I guess, the two plots together. So yes, realistically, if you were just, if you were, you know, not you and not really as vested as you are in this particular thing. If you saw that or came to that or that was presented to you as a, a, an agent of a developer, how much would you realistically pay for that? Granted, it's, you know, next to um, the Elm Court Hotel, okay, um, that it's across the street from a courthouse with a, a lockup or a jail and things happen there all the time, that it's on a one-way street that leads out to another one-way street um, with nothing really else around it. How, how, what value would you assess to that? There's, and I know you said you wanted to, to defer, but in your professional opinion, if you were not you. If I'm not me. Yes, you have your skills, but you're not you. Uh, um, I again had to look at, you know, there's the condition of the building now and the condition of, or the, of the land now mm -hmm. in, in, down, in the downtown that we have now. There's also the downtown that we're going to have in five, 10, 15 years. Um, the value of that property is, is obviously greater in a long run scenario than it is in a short run scenario. I, I find it very difficult to put a, a dollar value on that piece of property um, because you know it's next to the Elm Court Hotel, because it's on a one way street. However, it does have a lot of visibility and I think that there are, are potentials there. Um, I have not been discussing prices with a lot of people. I, that's it's something that I leave to the Redevelopment Authority or, or B21 okay. uh, as, as they show other properties downtown. Okay. So I, I, I wish I could pull a number out, but. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Council Monaghan, yeah, sorry, thank you for joining us. That's all right, I, was I believe this is your resolve, sir. Yes, it is. Thank was, you for this. I was taking care of a leak in front, a gas leak in front of your home, and I thank really you. don't think you want to Thank you. Well, well, it's insured, <laughs> so if it goes, it goes. Do you have a question, sir? Uh, yes, let's bring down Mr. May and uh, Mr. Jenkins, if you don't mind. I think this got a little crazy over here while I was. Let's see, you missed a few minutes, and it goes nuts. I think it was on point, Council, myself, and I'm, I'm the just, chair. I don't so know. I'm I missed go it all. It. I missed it all. So what the, the problem, and that's not really the problem, but I think we own, as a city, we own these vacant buildings right now. So we are the owners of these buildings. There's nobody to put a lien on, as far as I know, when something has to be demolished. So the city itself owns these buildings. Is that correct? This time, that's correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, we started, the BRA started a program to uh, sell these properties. Uh, I think myself and, and uh, Council Fowler were at a meeting with the BRA that we would be actually be on the planning of how and what the city wanted to do with these properties, buildings that they're still up, or whatever, the, the, the parcels, that's correct. 
So, so that's it. So all I was concerned about basically was, was this, was what happened, is why did the building come down? You knew nothing about it. We knew nothing about it. And so as we talked on the phone, basically, yeah. that communication would be a good idea if the building department let you guys know what was going on. Because we didn't know what was going on with the, uh, the site itself, and then we saw it in the paper and all that stuff. But anyway, we own them. If we had to take it down, we had to take it down. I don't think there's any, so I'm sort of hearing that I missed some stuff here, but I don't, I don't think there's anything going on underhandedly or sneakily or it's, it's looking like it's suspicious here because I don't even understand why, what, what it even looks, why it would look that way. What, who has, what to gain? We, get, we have to sell the property. So I think the, the, uh, the gist of it is that with the development of downtown, these prime properties, even though some might have to come down, maybe somebody can buy it, still up and renovate it, the advantage of selling those properties is going to increase the va value as they go along as the downtown develops. So it might be, we've had to pay a little bit of money right now, if it has to come down, it has to come down, but you sell that building, obviously as the values will go up, as downtown is redeveloped, we could probably get that money back in taxes. So I don't know if we, like I said, I missed a few things here, but my general the gist of it was only just to say that the building department and the BRA and the program that we have to sell these properties, that we all had to be on the same page, and that's basically what this resolve was about. Uh, I don't think, like I said, I don't think anything was suspicious, suspicious was going on, but I think it's all part of the downtown plan to bring it back. And like, we just like, we'd like to know, like the Petronelli building, like uh, Jim said, that's probably going to be next. And I know these buildings that have been sitting there with no roofs on them and no windows, it might be good as far as last year, but then if uh, Jim inspects it again, it, uh, six months later, maybe it has to come down. We just, I think basically we just need to know what's going on with those properties at the time so we're not blindsided and have to read about it in the paper. So that's, that's the whole gist of my thing. I don't think anything else is going on here. But like I said, the developer downtown, it's dependent on these built, these are prime spots that I think are gonna be worth a lot of money down the road as you, as you uh, mm -hmm. get that plan going. So I think for a little, you know, we gotta look ahead into the future a little bit and see what these properties actually can be worth. So you're gonna take one down, we're gonna, we, we have to take it down. We own these buildings. There's nothing else uh, going on with them. We have to do it as a city. I don't know what else to say about that. So that's about it, and the same. And, and I know when th these properties go up, Council Fowler, Councilor uh, Rodriguez, and myself will be involved in what the city wants to see actually going into those buildings when those things are going up from an RFP or, or whatever. So, all right, thank you, thank Mr. Thank you, Councilor. Councilors, any, any other questions? I know, Councilor Fowler, you have a follow up. Any councilors that didn't speak have any questions? Sorry. Seeing none, Councilor, do you? Councilor Yaneri, please. Let me ask um, the building commissioner, if I might, please, a couple questions. <laughs> commissioner, how are you? I'm wonderful, Councilor, how are you? Let me ask you this question. <laughs> Obviously, um, we've gone out to bid. We've been told the bid process came in to be somewhere from 335,000 to 1 million. Have we awarded a bid yet? I can't award a bid unless I have money. So the next step is you're going to be coming before the city council or, or you or the mayor is going to put before the city council an appropriation for us to award money to take the property to take the property down. Correct. And, and we're going to make that appropriation based upon just a, I don't think a number in the sky at some point we have to have. No, we, we did a procurement process and we have a, a price of $338,500. Okay, so that that's is what, the number. So that's the number that we're going to be looking to see at the next Correct. finance meeting, which will probably come through the next council meeting, mm -hmm. so it can be referred to the finance meeting. We're going to be working off of that particular number. That's the number. Which is not going to have anything to do with, at, this, at, at that point in time, how's the property going to be deeded? Is it deeded to the BRA? Is it to us? Or, I mean, Right now, it's the city's property. Right now, it's the city's property. That appropriation comes before the city. It's for us to make that decision to take that building down with that money that you've told us that is allocated in, in the um, um, well, abandoned that, building account. Th there's money in the account whether or not this council sees that that's appropriate expenditures for that money, I don't know. But 
we're going to need the money. But there is from money. Someplace. But there is money in in that account. Correct. Okay. And um, I've listened to a lot of the uh, you know the conversation here this evening as well as everybody probably has. And and you know however it's fanned out or whatever. Um, and, and I and I do can can you know I do take the side somewhat with the city council of bonds and and you know I who's been in the city of Brockton all my life as well. Um, you know my personal opinion. The building should have been handled back in 2009, 10, when it was burned out. I think that was under the Harrington administration. Sat there. It's, it's much better to, to do these when there's an owner involved, and, other and, than the city. And, and we didn't do that then. Is that correct? Or, or, yeah. Well, the, or the owner was any time anyone asked about the building, it was yeah. just a, you got a limbo answer of, I, I don't know. Yeah, I wasn't the commissioner. OK. That five but I, I firmly believe that, you know, Anytime it does happen in the future, I think we should be on top of it then and not eight years later. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? That's yep. my own personal opinion. I understand what everybody is indicating, and I understand what you're saying as well. And, and, and rightfully so, as the commissioner, you're telling us that this is what needs to be done because of the safety situation that is there. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Because of that, it needs to be done. Same as what's finally being done at Montello and Elliott Street that mess there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Thank God, because I, you know, I don't like seeing a snowbank like that go on for another summer because that was totally not the situation to, to see. And I understand what you're saying with the Petronelli building, when, when and if that comes about, that has a different uh, frame on it to other work that's gonna be done downtown. But in any case, I, I just wanted to be clear in my mind to what we were gonna be working with and for us to make that decision. And you know, at, at that time, I will wrestle with it. I don't like to see us have to spend that kind of money like that, but, if it's about public safety, then we need to do it, obviously. And then from that point, if we want to continue to do work downtown, then the people that are starting to do all this that they want to do downtown needs to get out there and sell the property and find out what can go there. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to do with all these vacant spots. It's going to be a long time before downtown. Sorry, that's my own opinion. I may be 80 years old before you see all that done. That's my own personal opinion. Still be on the council, though, council. I'll be right here. I'm not going anywhere. But anyhow, I just wanted to get that clear in my mind to how much we were spending in and uh, yeah. you know, making sure that we had enough money in there to do that. But thank you, thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Thank you Councilor. By the way, Councilor, I don't enjoy coming and giving bad news like this. It's not a fun thing for me to do. It's just my job. I understand that. I understand that. Thank you, Council Fowler. Follow up. As a result of going to that building in December of 2016, did you send an email or a memo to the mayor saying, we need to take this down immediately? Yeah, it was a letter. You did? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. On January 3rd, he got that letter. On January 3rd? Yeah. Okay. And as a certified building commissioner under the Board of Building Regulations and Standards, if you find a building within your jurisdiction that is so dangerous and so compromised, do you not have the authority to order that under an emergency to be taken down? I have to have money to take a building down. I need the money. Well, let me rephrase this then. Let's assume there's a horrendous fire. Yeah. And there's a, and there's a building that is absolutely dangerous to leave. Mm -hmm. You certainly wouldn't leave the burned out carcass of a building. You'd order it taken down, correct? I can't order a procurement without funds in place. I, I, I have, I have, um, demo money in my in my f in my budget, yeah. but not to this extent. Well, not, if not this kind of money. Well, but you just said you've got five hundred thousand dollars there. Would you have not had the authority in December of two thousand sixteen to say I've got to take this building down? No. This is dangerous. No, because I don't think the fund, the vacant registry fund, can be spent on a city building that isn't registered with the vacant registry. The, the building has never been registered as vacant. It's not part of the registry. So I think the idea that was, was floated out here tonight was that we would give it to the BRA for a dollar. I would send them the make safe order and they, they would register the building as vacant. Thereby it would be, you'd be able to use the vacant registry fund to remove that building and not have to go into the stabilization fund or wherever else you're going to find $338,000 while we have 550 sitting there. Okay, so just, just to be clear, it's your position 
that if you have a building that is so structurally compromised, it's a danger. You do not have the authority to order that to come down absent some pool of money from the city. I have the that. authority to order it, yeah. but I can't hire a contractor without money in place to pay well, them. Well, th then you wouldn't be able to take the building down, obviously. You'd, right. you'd have to have a contractor. All right, right, thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions? I entertain a motion then. Motion to recommend favorably to the full city council. So motion on the full property second recommendation, recommendation uh, favorable back to the full council. All in favor? I'll oppose that motion carries. Favorable recommendation back to full council. Councilors, as I said at the beginning of the meeting, I'd like to entertain a motion to take 15 out of order. Could someone make that motion? So Is there a second on that? Second. Motion's made properly second. All in favor? I'll oppose. Motion carries. Number 15, Madam Clerk, please. Resolved that the city's mayor and solicitor come before the finance committee to provide a status update and to discuss reacquiring the real property located at 226 Main Street, commonly known as the Gamely Building, that was conveyed by the city for nominal consideration to the Commonwealth for purposes of using the property as a college collaborative. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, Philip Nasrallah, city solicitor, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer. Councilors, just before we get into this, as you recall, I filed this uh, along with uh, the Dean of the Council, Councilor Yaneri, back in March 14th, 2016. At that time, the mayor came before us. Uh, he gave us an update. We mutually agreed to continue it. Since that time, a subsequent resolve was filed by Council Beauregard, inviting Senator Brady to come before us. Uh, Council, uh, Senator Brady did that. And then also, I believe there's a, there's a resolve on the floor to invite the Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito to appear before us, which uh, I don't think that's going to happen. But nonetheless, Senator Brady has informed Council Beauregard that he has spoken to the Lieutenant Governor about this matter. With that being said, I think it's more than appropriate to have the Mayor give an update from his perspective. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening. First of all, Mr. President, I'd like to thank you for the consideration allowing this item to go out of order. I do have an important family matter I yes. have to attend to this evening. So thank you. You're welcome. Um, so as you referenced, Mr. President, I think I've actually reported to the Council on several occasions now in terms of status changes and progress uh, yeah, two with times. where we're going yep. to property. Two times. The last time uh, that I appeared in front of you, I had updated the Council that DCAM had done an initial engineering study, that they had identified three options for the future of the property, and they were now doing further work to identify which direction they would want to go. Since that time, we've been actively and regularly engaged in discussions with DCAM uh, regarding uh, the future of the building. Uh, as you'll recall that when we discussed this last, two out of the three options involved either a partial or full demolition of the building. Uh, one option was to try to save it. So I'm pleased to tell the council that we've made substantial progress with DCAM in going towards the direction of saving the building at DCAM's expense. They would be the ones investing the money. We do not have a final determination yet. Um, We've spoken to DCAM as recently as last week, and we're hoping to get something. They told me that they thought a reasonable time frame would be within the next 30 days, that we would get something definitive from them, let's say during the month of May, but within the next 30 days or so. Um, so the exact scope of the work and the exact timeline, we don't have yet. We don't have the final commitment but I would advise the council that we've made substantial progress with DCAM in the direction of them taking the steps necessary to preserve the building. So some of the steps that have been talked about would be things like shoring up the structure, repairing the roof, abating asbestos, abating mold, um, securing the envelope of the building, uh, and in essence, mothballing it, but securing it, structure sound, seal it, and then preserve it to then continue a process of the city working with the state to determine what the highest and future best use of that building would be, but there would at least be a building that it had a significant amount of work done on it to preserve it. Uh, I like that alternative a lot better than a missing tooth in the heart of the downtown right where Belmont Street comes out to Maine. So I would say that I'm cautiously optimistic that that's the direction we're going. 
um, and I've been told that we can anticipate within 30 days or so a final determination from DCAM as to where they want to go with the building. That's good news. Good update, Mr. Mayor. And, and has any discussion been made? I know we, we've talked about it several times relative to originally it was going to be RAS, it was going to be on their dime. Uh, again, the city wasn't going to spend any money, but we were still hopeful because of the fact under the Patrick administration we did it in good faith to get the college collaborative, and that was cut by the, the current governor. Has any discussion been made that if the city does, if, if the state does spend the money in mothball, that they would ever consider conveying it back as an asset to the city? So the most recent conversation regarding that was with the Secretary of uh, the Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development, Jay Ash. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that conversation actually revolved around two DCAM owned properties in the city, the Christo site and the Ganley building. They're very different types of sites and very different locations. Um, but he expressed that they're willing to look at various models in terms of uh, the best way to, to redevelop the properties. So they, he expressed that there could be an interest in partnering with the city or having the city directly involved uh, in the planning. Uh, so I, I think that while they're not expressing any interest in going forward with schools on those sites, uh, which is a great disappointment to all of us, uh, I do believe that um, in good faith they do want to work with the city and go forward with um, the redevelopment of, of both of those properties. And I think that if they do uh, make this commitment, and, and I think it's <laughs> just by coincidence, I think the number's like between half a million and three quarters of a million for them to save that Ganley building. And I think if they do make that type of investment in saving that building, uh, that I think it is a, a sign of good faith on their part of, of wanting to work with us. And I certainly had expressed to them repeatedly that from the city's standpoint, you know, a total demolition was the last thing we wanted to see there. Great. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any questions for the mayor on this? Council, since the mayor said about 30 days, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a motion to postpone this matter. I'm going to ask that we postpone it until, uh, let me see, um, uh, let me see, we're in summer session. The Finance Committee meeting in July. Motion on the floor, it's been properly seconded. All in favor, all oppose that motion carries. Mr. Mayor, before yeah. you depart. Oh, just in, in Mr. President, if yes. I could follow up on that. It would be uh, my hope and intention to be getting back to the council, hopefully with some good news uh, long before that. So when we become aware of a final plan and decision, uh, I would certainly will notify the council. Thank you very much. And, and, and Mr. Mayor, a little off track, do we have any expectation, do you have any preliminary budget hearing Dates. Do you have anything in mind? Sure, yes. Um, so what we've done consistently uh, for the past three years is we have delivered the budget to the City Council on the Friday before Memorial Day weekend. And our intention is to, to make that deadline again this year, even though it's a little bit before we're required to get it mm -hmm. to you. Um, we are trying to work cooperatively with you and give the Council is sufficient time so obviously we'll work with you, Mr. President, and you'll be the one scheduling. Um, but I, we would be hopeful that that week of June 5th, 4th, 5th, whatever that week is, the first full week of June, that um, the council would be ready to go forward with the budget hearings on that week if, if we are able to get that budget into your hands the Friday before Memorial Day Excellent. weekend. Excellent. Good information. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you. Have a good evening. Uh, Councils, we're going to go on to, uh, uh, Madam Clerk, agenda item 13. And I do want to thank uh, the people that were invited for 13 and 14. It's kind of been a longer meeting than anticipated. Um, so we do truly appreciate, on behalf of the Finance Committee, we appreciate you being here. Number 13, please. Resolve to invite Ms. Sarah Morris, the coordinator of the newly created Downtown Center for Community Engagement Office, and allow her to present information on the services provided through the center that are available to volunteer-based organizations in the city and to discuss their community gardening program to the city council. Invited Sarah Morris, coordinator, Downtown Center for Community Engagement. Council Borgard, this is yours, correct? Yes, this is my resolve. and. Uh, I do not see Ms. Sarah Morris here this evening. She did receive a letter. She had emailed me on Thursday, gave her directions here. So something could have come up that I, and she might have tried to call me, 
this is my third meeting this evening. To entertain so, a motion then yes, on this council. I would like to entertain a motion to postpone it to the next finance committee meeting, please. Council, there's a motion on the floor, property second to postpone to the next finance. All in favor? All opposed, motion carries. Madam Clerk, if you could note, we're gonna postpone that to the next finance committee meeting, please. Last agenda item for the evening would be number 14, please. Resolved to invite Mr. Ronald K. Freedy, the director of the Greater Brockton Center for Dispute Resolution to introduce him and allow him to present information on the services provided through the center available to anyone living in Plymouth County to the City Council. Invited Ronald K. Freedy, Director, Greater Brockton City, sorry, Greater Brockton Center for Dispute Resolution. Good evening, sir. Thank you for being here. Thank you. We thank, thank you for your patience. It's a <laughs> lot, uh, a lot drawn out than we thought. Um, with that being said, is this yours, Councillor? This is also my resolve, and floor, welcome, Councilor. Mr. Frede. Um, I, I, I'll be up front here. I've known um, Ron for a few years now, and I just believe this service that he oversees is very advantageous. So many individuals at different times and different circumstances, and that's why I want him to come up and realize this. And I also want to make it clear that this, the, this is all available in downtown Brockton, so thank you. Thank you, I promise to be brief. <laughs> um, who we are, we're the Greater Brockton Center for Dispute Resolution. Our office is located in the Boston, uh, in the Brockton District Courthouse on the second floor, room 207. We've been providing dispute resolution services for approximately 30 years uh, through the court system. Um, the services that we provide primarily is a mediation service. We provide that to the court. We also provide it to consumers. Uh, we provide it to businesses, we provide it to the public, uh, we provide juvenile mediation services in the Plymouth courts as well as the Brockton courts. Um, we also have a conciliation program for uh, civil disputes that are over $7,000, the small claims listed, but we have attorneys who do pro bono work and they come in and they conciliate the dispute. Um, all of our services, uh, mediation services and conciliation services are free. And the question comes up is, why are they free? They're free because you've already paid for them. We're funded through the state. We're funded by the Mass Office of Public Collaboration and also partly by the Attorney General's Office. And we have a small grant from the Mass Bar Foundation for our conciliation program. The types of disputes that we typically handle are ones that you would find in the court, in around the court. Uh, typically, the, anything to do with auto repair, auto rental, auto sales type of thing, landlord-tenant disputes. Uh, consumer disputes, um, divorce, uh, custody cases, uh, family and friends disputes, uh, pretty much run the, the gamut. Um, who are the mediators? Uh, our mediators, we have 11 mediators on our roster. We have uh, five or six that attend regularly to Brockton uh, small claims. And we also provide services after hours to constituents who may be working during the week and may not be able to come to a mediation session during the week. We utilize the Brockton Public Library on Monday and Tuesday evenings. We, uh, we confiscate the small conference room and uh, we do after hours mediations and we even do mediations on Saturday if people cannot make it during the week. Uh, how does mediation work? Basically our office gets a referral from multiple locations uh, could come from the Attorney General's office, could come from the court, could come from a walk-in that uh, sees our website and comes to visit us. Uh, we are on our web. Uh, uh, we are on the web and our address is www.gbcdr.org and there is contact information on that website. I also have some brochures and cards I'd like to leave with you. Thank you. Uh, for your constituents. And uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with mediation, uh, mediation is considered an alternative dispute resolution process. It's considered an alternative to the normal process that one would go through through court or an administrative forum. Um, it, and there's a lot of benefits to that, uh, one of them being that it is free, it's cheaper. Uh, you don't have to file a small claims case to have your case mediated by us. Uh, if you do file a small claims case in the court system, you do pay a fee, we don't charge anyone a fee. Uh, we do provide training, there is a small <coughs> fee for mediation training. Uh, it's a 32 hour basic mediation training class and if people take advantage of that, 
Uh, there is a small tuition payment. However, if they decide to volunteer for our organization for a short period of time, we will reimburse that tuition. So that also becomes free. It's a service that, as much as we publicize it, we've been on the radio, we've been in the newspapers, uh, we've been to events uh, in and around Brockton. We service, by the way, 28 communities in and around the Brockton area, so it's not just Brockton. But uh, as much as we publicize ourselves, I think we're still a little known service. So I appreciate the opportunity to come tonight to let you know about our services uh, so that you can pass that on to your constituents. Any questions? Thank you. I I just, if it's all right, I'd like to say that you also have this available in other languages. You have interpreters should the need arise, and I just believe that's important. And also, you mentioned to me on more than one occasion, if people are physically challenged or unable for transportation, that you are able to come to their homes exactly. or some other. And I just want to let you know, and I'll defer to one of the counselors. Just had one question. Relative to the training that you said, and you could waive the tuition if you give back, what are the types of people that would like to take the training. Are they all lawyers or not? Oh, no. Uh, we do have lawyers that are on our staff uh, or have been on our staff in the past. Uh, there is no requirement for uh, anyone to be an attorney. Uh, you just need to have some interest in uh, community mediation. Thank you. Councilor Isaac. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to thank you for being here tonight and thank um, Councilor Beauregard. I've been at a few different meetings that you've presented. And we have a lot of assets and a lot of resources in this city that a lot of our constituents and residents don't know about. And this is uh, one of them. So I'm glad you were here to give this presentation. I hope people take advantage of it. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Bonds. Yes, I, I have two questions, actually. So I could kind of, if I have a problem with my neighbor, I can come to the court and say, hey, listen, I need some mediation. I think we can work this out. And then you would assign me the process. Like, how, how would that go? How soon can I can I get to? To confront my neighbor. Uh, generally, what happens is, uh, regardless of how you contact us, whether it be through telephone, by mail, uh, by an email, uh, we would uh, get the names of the parties involved. Mm -hmm. We would contact the other party and uh, determine whether or not they would be interested in attending a mediation. Okay. In Massachusetts, mediation is a voluntary process, um, so you cannot force somebody to attend a mediation session. But once we determine that the other party is willing to attend a mediation session, we set up the session at a time and place uh, that's convenient to both parties. And then, um, so now, say you said this is uh, before you, or you know, trying to, in lieu of going to court, say if something is disclosed during one of the mediation, mediation sessions that you know, somebody might be um, a danger to themselves or to others, are you all medi uh, mandated reporters of any kind, or is that? We, we are not mandated reporters. Okay, okay. Great, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, thank Council. you. Any other questions, Councilors? Council yeah. Borg, I entertain a motion. Um, yes, I wanna follow, you know, resolve um, to send this over favorably to Second. full city council. Motion made properly, second and favorable recommendation back to full council. All in favor? Thank All opposed, that motion thank carries. And back to the council thank favorably. Thank you very much. Councilors, just a point of information again. Um, uh, t tomorrow night, actually, uh, the Newton Mayor, Seti Warren, is coming to the City of Brockton, 5.30 at George's Cafe, 6 p.m. We have a planning board meeting in the, uh, in the GAR room at City Hall. And then, again, remember, May 8th, one week from tonight, we're meeting here again for the full City Council meeting, 8 o'clock in the little theater here at Brockton High School. Councilor Lally. Uh, Absolutely, Councilor. Uh, give a, a quick update. Uh, on the property, it was mentioned a couple of times at North Montello Street and Elliott Street. Yes, Councilor. Uh, the EPA came down today and uh, announced with the, uh, I was there, the mayor was there, uh, and the DEP was there, along with uh, Chief Williams and Chief Crowley. Uh, they will be cleaning up, but they, they will be starting this week to clean up that property. Uh, maximum, you know, uh, they expect it to take at longest uh, three to four months. Okay. Uh, it will be a total of $700,000. The city will not have to pay anything. The EPA will cover the cost. Uh, so that's, that's underway. They're, they're starting to work on that. Great update, Councilor. Up Thank you. We we're all wondering. Thank you very much about that. Anything else? Councilor? Yes, um, I attended the Parking Authority meeting and the Tech Review meeting, and as usual, I continue to invite individuals from the community, and I know everyone says, oh, sure. Well, don't you think a young woman that's new to the city, educated professional, 
attended the parking authority meeting and what does she say? Can I come to all these meetings? How do I find out about all this? And again, I've mentioned to everyone that our city's website uh, is always, oh, it has all these listed. But what was exciting about it is, again, this was an individual that could contribute to the community. She was ready and interested in doing so, and she came with both her education and experience. But again, you want to know what's going on in Broughton. The best way to find out is through the, the city's website and attending these meetings. They're all you know, accessible to you. I also want to mention, I'm starting it early now, my Ward 5 meeting will be on Tuesday, May 23rd at 304 Main Street, which is the main library. And this is an opportunity to see more than one elected official in a building at one time. Our state rep, Jerry Cassidy, will be on the first floor in the large conference room. And our meeting will be upstairs on the third floor in the Driscoll Gallery. And our guest will be Ray Giardino, the um, individual from the Old Colony Planning Council that's going to be discussing, of all things, uh, the plans for Route 123, Belmont Street and Center Street in Brockton, Excellent. and its future. So I think that's pretty important stuff. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Thank Isaac. You. I need a few moments of personal privilege. Sure, so. <laughs> First off, I'd like to remind everybody that uh, Brockton High School uh, Drama Club is putting on Sister Act this year. And the dates are um, May 12th, 13th, and 14th. Tickets are available, and I hope everybody will come out to support our kids. Um, they're re really doing a great job, and this, they put on an amazing show. Every year gets better and better. So um, hopefully you'll come out, support them, see the show. It's Mother's Day weekend. It's a great gift for mothers. You can also help them by sponsoring and uh, being in their ad book. And I know my colleagues here, many of them have already sponsored the kids. Um, they need our support. They need to raise a lot of money um, to put this show on. Uh, the other two comments I have is tomorrow night the um, school committee will be meeting, I believe, here uh, in the Little Theater. And um, they meet at 7 o'clock. And I believe they're going to have an open hearing beforehand around 6, 6.30 if you sign up. Right now there's a lot of... Um, comments out there, there's a lot of um, rumors out there of what's going to be cut in the school budget, and I hope parents and students come out to really inform themselves so they're not just um, panicking and just hearing rumors of what's going on. So that's tomorrow night, Tuesday night, uh, 7 p.m. or 6.30 here in the Little Theater at Brockton High School. I would also um, like to remind everybody that my phone number is public. I answer my phone, and if anybody has any questions regarding anything that's going on in the ward or in the city, please contact me. Going on social media and just making comments, I, I don't even see them. I can't answer them. But if you call me or send me an email, I will, give you, I will answer my phone or give you a call back. So my number is 508-451-1632, and it's always on me. So I will answer your questions. And lastly, I want to wish my daughter Georgina a happy uh, 14th birthday. She'll be turning 14 on Cinco de Mayo this Friday. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, happy birthday thank to her, Council. Council, there's a couple things. Uh, number one, I want to thank the audio, audio and visual uh, individuals that have been coming here um, really to do in yeoman's work. So thank you very much for, for doing that. Thank you. Um, and I also want to thank, of course, Mel and Connie um, for, for really uh, working hard to get the agenda out. Um, Connie has been emailing me on a regular basis and it's great. I do just want to give a gentle reminder, counselors, that if you have invited guests and you refer to finance, we, meaning me as the chair, and Connie and Mel need to have the address and the legal name of that person in a timely manner. Uh, not to wait to the last minute because I will ask Connie to push it to the next finance meeting. It's not fair. Um, they, they're doing many tasks, but one of them is to generate a timely agenda and get it out so we can review it, and the people invited can, can give enough time to get, get before us. Again, we invite these people. We can't make them come. So with that being said, Constance, I know it was a long evening. I think it was a fruitful evening. It was a good discussion. Thank you for people for coming here, and uh, have a good evening.